once again to Hemp Engineering, all friends around the world, advocates, activists, and supporters of this cause. Today, we have the great pleasure of having with us Mr. David Chills. He has been involved in this industry for years. He has been um, a, a founder and co-founder of um, associations in Western Australia related to hemp, and right now, he is doing an extraordinary job working with um, the uh, hemp blocks, but uh, his main role is promoting and um, interconnecting uh, several important companies that uh, need the support to scale up. Welcome, Mr. David. Welcome. Nice to catch up with you again, Ramon. Yes, I want to highlight the fact that we are uh, broadcasting from Perth, Western Australia. Yes, the only city on earth without COVID-19. <laughs> the healthiest place on the planet. You got that right. <laughs> David, I, once again, this is a great pleasure. Generally start asking, what was your motivation or how did you end up working for the, for the hemp industry? Tell us about yourself. Well, well, originally my wife, she had cancer and uh, she was not able to use fish oil because she had secretary of poisoning when she was over Fiji many years ago. And I was looking around for something else that would give the Amigas trees and so on that would benefit her health. And I stumbled across hemp and uh, saw the benefits of in hemp and then it grew from that into building side of things. And I got interested because I've been in the building game for many years over this way, to look at making hemp blocks as an alternative way of building. So I've been experimenting for the last six months or more with different applications for it. And we've come to make uh, blocks for our house that we're renovating. It's only a two bedroom house, but we're going to extend it out into another two more bedrooms and put the hemp blocks around. And so far I've found by using them that they're very beneficial from the point of view in our temperature, we have it either too hot or in the winter time, it gets down 10 you know, degrees and things like that. So that's why I've been developing the hemp blocks and I found them very good in controlling the hemp, the, the temperature variation in the building. I um, also realize uh, the, one of the most as, uh, important aspect that you also highlight from the hemp treat blocks are the weight uh, compared with concrete blocks, right? Yes, um, I was quite staggered actually. I went to a company called Bunnings that's over this way and got one of their concrete blocks and I weighed it and it was 15 kilos. And then I weighed the blocks that I made, which was the same equivalent block and it was five kilos. And my wife lifted up and she said, I don't want to lift the 15 kilo blocks. I'd rather lift the hemp blocks. And so she was quite happy with that. And she's been helping me in the manufacture of the blocks as well. Yeah, so it's pretty simple the way that we're doing it. Anybody can do it. It's just you, you mix, it's like making a cake. You just got to get your mixture right. I agree with you. I agree with you. Um, that brings us to the second question since on regards of the um, uh, challenges that you find for Western Australia um, uh, to get the, the raw material uh, for for manufacturing the blocks? Well, the issue that we've had over here in Western Australia is that um, everybody would like to grow industrial hemp, but they haven't got a market for it as of yet from the point of view of um, we can grow it, they can produce it and things like that, but they haven't got the end market. So what we're trying to do is develop markets for the industrial hemp plant to be able to use in different variations. Uh, we're using it, uh, looking for markets in plastics and to many other different areas. We're not keeping on the food side because that's being looked after here in Western Australia. You can go to Coles and Woolies and buy 
uh, hemp seeds, hemp oil, and things like that need health food shops have it. But we're looking from the building point of view and even in boats, we've got with our hemp mastermind group that we have here in Western Australia, we've got an engineer who has uh, designed and built a model boat out of hemp. And we're about to show that in a seminar that's coming up uh, at Perth, Perth Financial Yacht Club, as well as the Perth Home Show. So we're, we're showcasing industrial hemp in many different ways. We've got another gentleman, uh, Dr. Leslie Westerland, who's going to showcase industrial hemp paper. And we've got a polymer engineer who is looking at plastics we can make from hemp. So there's many different applications that we're working towards to show to the general public that you can use industrial hemp on a variety of different areas. So from that point of view, growing it here is not a problem. We've, we've got the Ord River up in the upper part of Western Australia, and they've got as much water in the dam up there as four times Sydney Harbour. Uh, so we've got the capacity to be able to grow industrial hemp here. We just need to be able to get all the uh, ducks lined up in a row, basically. And so we see that industrial hemp can solve many different issues for the building industry. And one building that was just completed recently in Hillary's by uh, Matt Kilgallen, he had a two story house and I went into it and on the second story, the temperature was the same as ground floor. And I was quite staggered how good it was to actually live and you know, move around in the building. And the actual house itself sold very quickly. People just bought it up and we found that that was quite amazing too because the housing market here in Perth is a bit volatile at the moment. So industrial hemp, people can see the value of it and we're building houses over here um, in uh, Margaret River and other places as well. And we're looking at moving it forward in different areas. Because Western Australia's economy, funny enough, is booming at the moment with the mining industry. So people are not short of cash. And so we're trying to show them, you know, use industrial hemp as an alternative instead of going down the, the traditional route. I agree with you uh, because <clears throat> the traditional construction method, uh, it is, um, uh, sun uh, consumer to the point that the banks and the mines of sands are being depleted. So um, the alternative is using hempcrete, which is basically a mix between earth, lime and water. Very simple. Yes, I agree with you. Anybody can do it. Um, what, but the skill that think? you have acquired is, is, is amazing because you are delivering already a product that is required for the industry in this part of the world. Mm -hmm. what, what I've found is many people talk about industrial hemp and they say, oh, is it marijuana? And I say, well, it's from the cannabis family, but it has no THC in it, high THC. Um, people need to recognize that industrial hemp is a vegetable. Now, would we get excited about broccoli or would we get excited about, you know, any other Lentils. vegetable plant? Yes. You know, so why are we getting excited about industrial hemp? I mean, it's, at the end of the day, it's a, a vegetable that has 25 or more thousand different applications yes. that can benefit humanity on many different levels. And I've never seen a plant that has so many multiple uses and I mean, you can't get that out of most vegetables, can you? So, uh, I agree with you. Industrial hemp. I agree with you. I agree with you. 100%, 100% agree with you. It is like um, uh, sooner or later, um, the, per the perception has to change um, and the stigma of it has to be somehow adjusted to the, to the knowledge of the science. That's my understanding. Mr. David, I have seen with my own eyes your product, your effort building your home. Um, I, but uh, we have always talked about a larger scale. So that brings us to the next question. Um, 
we we are all dreamers. We are somehow influencers in the in the industry. I could I would love the audience to listen to your dreams rather than your plans. <laughs> I know that you are a firm believer that we can be self-sustainable in Western Australia, something that we both uh, um, share in within our mastermind group. Um, but uh, it is important for all of us listening to your to what you have in your mind. Please. Well, I remember ages ago you and I met at the agricultural department here in Perth, Western Australia. And um, I had a few words to say in disagreements with what you were saying at the time. But yes. um, I think industrial hemp has the potential of growing industries on many levels. And if we take, like I, I have a saying for people who say, well, what can we do with industrial hemp? Well, I say to them, well, you take plastics that we're producing now. Anything you make in plastics can be made in industrial hemp and is biodegradable, is safer to the environment and will last longer. And you won't get any toxins off it and you won't get any health issues off it. So why don't we use it? The reason why we don't use them is because we've got these big players out there that have pushed petroleum products onto people for so many years and they've failed to realise what damage it's doing to their health. I mean, what got me interested in industrial hemp as well was a gentleman over in America who was a designer of homes. His daughter was getting sick house syndrome from the house that they were living in. What they did is change the building that she was living in and build a hemp one. Amazing enough, his daughter's health got better. Wow. So a lot of people are getting sick in their own homes and they're unaware that their home is making them sick and their children as well. So when you think of it from that point of view, then you start to realise, hey, this is costing me money because I'm, you know, health, you have to go to the doctor and things like that. Another issue that comes up too is the cost of electricity. Over here, it's rising. I suppose it's rising everywhere else in the world too. Mm -hmm. But with the cost of electricity going up, the problem is that people have no avenue of saving money. If they build a house out of industrial hemp, A, they wouldn't have to turn the air conditioning on in the summertime, and B, you wouldn't have to pay for firewood to keep the place warm. We've got houses down here in uh, the southern part of Western Australia that was built in a, a town called Northcliffe. And the family that built the house there, they, they grow truffles. Yes. They built the house, they put a fire into it, and they air conditioning as well, but they've never turned their air conditioning on, they've never turned their fire on, and you add up the savings of that over the years. I mean, just even 10 years alone, that would pay for a lot of other things that you don't need to waste on electricity bills. And so, it pays by itself. You know, when, <laughs> so when you start adding up the costs, this yes. is when you start to realize, hey, I'm getting ripped off here, what's going on? Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, people from the point of view of batteries, you know, you can make batteries out of industrial hemp as well. Yes. Why aren't we doing that? Um, they're far better battery that you can plug in your own home and um, benefit from that as well. So, I mean, there's so many different applications and we're even looking over here, as, as you know, um, with a mixture of graphene, which is a new product that's come online. And we're looking at using graphene as a blend within batteries, within building and things like that. So we've got a company over here called First Graphene, a West Australian company, yes. who we're working in collaboration with them. So from that point of view, we can use industrial hemp in many, and I mean, we could talk for hours about the different applications that we can use industrial hemp. But we've got to look from the economic savings, because people aren't going to change to something else unless they can see the savings. And that's why I say to people, once you build your house out of hemp, they've got houses over in Japan that are 600 years old. Yes. I mean, the average house here in Australia is not going to last 600 years. It's only going to last, if you're lucky, 100. And most of them, they bowl them over here in about 50. 
and put up a new one because either they're cracks or this and that and things like that. So industrial hemp will outlast the present throwaway buildings that we have today and it will be healthier for people to live in. And I mean, what else can we say? I mean, you're saving money all the way around, your health's getting better. I mean, can you find any other product on the market that can do that? I don't, I don't think, think so. I don't think so. No. I don't think so. Um, um, it is very important what you just said, David, because <clears throat> from the point of self-sustainability and circular economy, building homes made out of hempcrete, where you can have a hemp battery and you can have solar power uh, source to energize our needs, basically uh, put us in a, in, in, in a complete different um, economic environment. Would you agree that um, this industry could help us to create a new era on that regards? Well, everybody's talking about, you know, helping the environment and making a difference and, and going green and things like that. They've got something right in front of their faces. Industrial hemp is there right now and it's been around for thousands of years. And people, it's like sometimes it's the best thing that you can need is staring you right in the face. And that's why we're encouraging people to think out of the box. You know, everybody's got locked in their own little mindset. Um, just kind of like think out of the box and think of it there's another way of doing something better than the way we presently have. And don't believe what everybody is generally saying because most of the time it's disinformation. It's not true. It's just a perception that they people come from. So I think industrial hemp has great potential to help many people on many levels from a health point of view, from an economic savings point of view, and all those things, when you add them all up, you start to think, well, why haven't I got into it before? And the reason why a lot of people haven't got into it because of their perception. All we need to do is just to have a shift. And once we have a mental shift, we start to open up our minds to see the benefits of industrial hemp. Myself personally, I haven't been smoking marijuana. I haven't dissipated in that myself, but I do see the advantages of industrial hemp from an economic health and other issue point of view. So I think we all just need to take a breath and just remember, it's only a vegetable. It's not a big deal. Yeah. And um, that way we can kind of like get our heads around the potential that this one little plant is offering to the West world. It's not going to go away. We only live on this planet for X amount of years. We want to live on this planet, hopefully, in a healthy and economically beneficial way for our families. And that's the way I look at it from the point of view, not from the point of view, well, how much money am I going to, it's going to cost me to do this? I mean, when you build a house out of industrial hemp, you are not going to have any builder on this planet who's able to say, I can have, make this house last 600 years. I don't even guarantee it, you know. <laughs> so that's what I'm saying to people. It, it's just a matter of a mental shift. And once everybody's made that mental shift and they go, if you, we've got houses down here in Margaret River that you can go and rent the rent for the weekend. Once you go in there and try it, I went into a house that was built from industrial hemp and you walk in the door and you go, I want to stay here. This has a good feel. And once you've felt it, you've tried it, you've seen it, then you get to know that's what I need for myself and my family. And I think, you know, we all really want to help our families, health, wealth and well-being. And from that point of view, I, I mean, I mean, I can't say any much more about it, you know, they try for themselves. My apologies, uh, David, um, uh, I would like to reinforce your speech and your position um, on regard to the perspective, uh, perception of the, of the plant itself. When we talk about cannabis, governments are mostly focusing to the marijuana aspect. But at the end of the day, it's exactly like you said, it, it all depends on the applications that we want to use it for. 
It's like when you see a tomato, uh, or I'm sorry, a potato. When you see a potato, you see food. You don't see vodka, right? No. Exactly. No. So it, it, it is the, the, we, the vodka comes from potato. So the cannabis, yes, it can be used for recreational purposes, but it, all, it, it also brings a lot of benefits to humanity in regards not only to construction, but for food, clothing, and you name it. I am, yes, I am very pleased with my, my, my name. I, I, just going back to the potato side of things, over in India, they found that potato skins can be used for uh, skin burns. It's a cheap way of helping people with skin burns. So when you find something that's going to benefit people, you kind of like would think, well, why don't I use it? I think the biggest issue here is not a matter of what industrial hemp can do, it's a matter of a co economy disruptor. Yes. And the problem is, is that the big companies on this planet want to keep their turf the way it is. They don't want a plant coming in like industrial hemp that can do disrupt their economic well-being. And that's why they got rid of industrial hemp in the first place back in the 1930s because it was a competitor to uh, DuPont, who was making nylon rope and who was doing other things. Like industry. Industry. And now we have throughout the world, DuPont has taken on the whole world. And what have we got? We've got plastics in the rivers, we've got plastics in the sea, we've got plastics everywhere. What is it doing? It never dies. It stays there till for eternity. So I think it's about time we start saying to ourselves, we need something natural, not something man-made. And yeah. that's what industrial hemp can be for us all. It's a natural product. We can grow it in 120 days. Not hard, not rocket science. What would you like to add to this uh, extraordinary speech to our audience, David? I personally think everybody says, what can I do? Well, we can all do something is change our buying habits. Demand that we have quality products and ask for things that are not going to affect the environment. I mean, we're working with people to make plastic bags out of hemp. There's other countries they are making plastic bags out of other um, plant-based products. If these products are biodegradable, we need to think what can we do in a little way to help the planet grow? Because at the moment, if we keep going the way they're going, everything is not working to it for the benefits of mankind. So I say to everyone, industrial hemp is not just the, the panacea for everything, but there's other products out there as well that can benefit our planet that we live on. So we need to work towards a sustainable future and not just the same old, same old we've been doing. Really and do. if we do a little bit at a time, and from one, one, one seed of a plant, you can get the biggest tree on the earth. So from little things, big things grow. And I think that's where we all can do our little bit. With um, with uh, encouragement of your and spirit of um, that you're putting on the table, I am very sure that this message can reach uh, the proper people to uh, come to the to our master group mind and, and add value. Um, we can help them to scale up or to provide their their ideas, which is the well, I, I, one of our main. Points. I personally feel everybody's got an idea. We can all contribute something towards making things better, and it doesn't matter where we come from. We're all inventors and we all have ideas that somebody, oh, my father used to say to me, son, if you find a problem, you find a solution, then you can make money out of it. Well, we've got a problem. This planet is getting sick. We need a solution, maybe industrial hemp, maybe something else, but we need to all kind of make an effort to try and make it grow so that whatever it may be, to help this planet get better. Because if we don't, it ain't gonna improve itself. You are one of the pioneers in this industry in Western Australia. 
uh, there was an American person in, uh, in, he died in the 80s, if I recall well, his name was Jack Herrer, mm -hmm. and he used to say that uh, hemp is the only solution. Mr. David, it has been a great pleasure uh, for hemp engineering having you on board, uh, listen to your dreams, listen to your perspective, I am sure that we have a lot of work to do ahead. Uh, the Perth Home Show is one of them. We're going to be showing your hemp logs and the other products. Another thing we forgot to mention too, we're working along with yourself uh, about a vehicle body made from hemp as well. So we're, we're looking at from, from a vehicle point of view, batteries, vehicles, and things like that. Even we've been talking about tut tuts, you know, uh, making vehicles from hemp uh, for tuk-tuks because in the Asian market, they've um, got lots of tuk-tuks over there that they use to drive and people around. But there's many different applications. I mean, it's just a matter of think about it and we we'll come up with a solution. Huh? The car is a, something that is a big dream for all of us. And I would say we are very near to, to, to get something done. We basically have all the components. We have the people. Just uh, we need to find the proper time. <laughs> time is the asset in this moment. Mr. David, thank you very much. I am once again very pleased and happy for your words. I am, I know that you are a fighter and a warrior of light. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ramon. Nice to chat, chat to you.